Hi, welcome back to Dr. Sam in the City. Today is rather more of a what's going on in my life type video um, because I just had an MRI of my back and I thought I would talk to you about what's been going on with how that's been affecting me and how it's been affecting my skin. Um, so I've been in a lot of pain um, and I'm having it investigated and yeah, having an MRI not so much fun it turns out, especially if they look, have to look at different parts of your spine. So I was in the MRI tunnel for two hours today, hence I'm in yoga gear and um, trying to sort of, you know, be comfortable and probably not as groomed as I would normally be for videoing. But anyway, this is real life and I just wanted to talk to you about my experiences. So chronic back pain, um, and I say chronic in that it's been affecting me for a couple of months now, um, is a real tricky one. and especially if you do a job where you know you use your arms and your hands as I tend to do in the practice a lot um, and not only has it been affecting me in my work it's also been affecting me in my sleep um, so you know it's a bit miserable so what I've had to really do is to look at how I manage stress because it's such a big part of it um, and just really focus in on, on ways to improve my general well-being to help me manage the pain better um, but also of course to look at postural things um, and I realise there are so many little ways that you know when I'm under pressure life can get a bit dysfunctional um, I breathe from here and I don't breathe from here and my thoracic spine stiffens up um, and I think there's no doubt that all the sort of technology being on social media all the time whether it's on your phone or on your laptop um, and internally irritated in the shoulder you know, all this business definitely takes its toll. But um, anyway, the important thing, of course, is to get to the bottom of what's causing trouble. But like I was saying, I think the way it's been making me feel has really been affecting how I feel about the way I look and how my skin feels. And I think there's no doubt that stress has a multitude of effects on your skin. If it's been going, something has been going on for a little while, um, it does take its toll. I've seen people in the clinic who've literally erupted into spots in kind of their more mature adult life in their 30s and 40s, having not had any spots in their teenage years. There's definitely something in the stress, brain, skin axis, um, and cortisol is clearly um, one of the major kind of contenders for what's driving when our skin goes wrong, when we're not feeling great. Um, so certainly I've been a bit more prone to breaking out than usual. And the other thing is my skin's been more dry and irritable. And again, that's something that I think you see with raised cortisol levels. Um, skin barrier function isn't quite as good as it might normally be. Now this might sound like a bit of a whinge, but it, it's really more to sort of examine the way you live your life and how you manage your body. It's a very precious thing, a very precious commodity. And I can certainly um, admit to not looking after um, the, the vessel that gets me around as well as I should have been. And I took a long look at that when I was on holiday um, in Ibiza and Formentera recently and started to get back into yoga. And because I had a few aches and pains, had a couple of private lessons, just because I think, especially with yoga, if you rock up to a big, busy class and you've got problem areas, uh, it's, it's really the pace of the class, especially like a vinyasa flow cl class, could just kind of you know, freak you out and make you do um, even more damage. So I think it's so important to get your positioning right. And oftentimes it means investing in a couple of private lessons to make sure that you really get your alignment right. And certainly that's what's worked for me. And I've actually gone for a more static form of yoga to try to get um, strength back in my problem areas um, using Hatha yoga. But I really want to hear your thoughts about that and, and how you perhaps use something like yoga or Pilates to help manage um, a more medical issue, if you will. So that's one thing I've been doing. Um, I have been looking at my breathing um, in a sort of meditative sort of way. I haven't quite yet um, gotten meditation back into my my day to day um, existence, and it's something that's on my to do list definitely. But I've really been consciously looking at my breathing patterns. Um, I'm definitely a breath holder when I'm under stress. Um, and I will emit gasps or sighs or whatever um, and not breathe in a deep rhythmic fashion using my diaphragm so it's all up here. And really looking at that is super important because if you're not breathing properly you um, are mismanaging your carbon dioxide levels 
and that can lead to feelings of stress and tension. So you just get this awful whirling cycle of um, decompensation. So um, if, like me, you catch yourself kind of feeling stressed um, in a physical way whenever you're mentally stressed, it takes, just take a few minutes to breathe properly, really focus on your inhalation and your exhalation. Um, and, and, and manage the stress away in a physical way, and then you, you feel more in control and capable of getting back on with the things in a practical way. Um, so yeah, yoga, being mindful of my breathing, two really critical things, I think, to managing um, a back pain situation, getting a diagnosis, getting tests, of course, very important. Um, but in terms of my skin, what have I been doing differently? I mean, I, I usually focus on things that really help with barrier function, um, and are anti-inflammatory um, anyway. So omega-3s are a staple. I think they help in both instances. A tendency to dry skin when under pressure um, and with blemish-prone tendencies. Um, I've been looking at ways to improve my sleep quality because for me that's super important. I'm almost guaranteed to break out more um, if I'm not sleeping properly because bad sleep equals muscle tension, equals more discomfort. And again, when there's sort of horrible downward spirals um, and painkillers do nothing. So I, I really think you have to manage your sleep hygiene very carefully whenever, you know, life is testing. Um, so for me, that means having a really good quality mattress. So boring, these things. But, you know, if you're not in your shoes, you're, you're on your bed. So um, for me, investing in shoes and mattress has been very important in my life. And I'm a pocket sprung mattress kind of gal. Um, I find a wool duvet a really great um, thing to use because I really think it helps thermoregulate during the night and we really should be quite cool um, at bedtime. It helps improve um, melatonin, which is the sleepy hormone production. So um, for me, I like a cool room and I find a woolen um, duvet, which sounds a bit weird, but it, it, it just enables you to thermoregulate better during the night and not get overheated so easily. I find that to be great. I always carry my pillow around with me. That sounds so weird, I know, but I'm really not the girl to just take hand luggage anywhere because I always have to have my pillow with me. Thankfully, it's a nice um, down one that squashes down to absolutely nothing, but that gives me consistency and support in the right places. Um, and you're not stuck with one of those like, mad foam pillows that's like sleeping on a brick when you walk up to a hotel. So um, yeah, so that's sleeping. Um, Skincare wise, I don't really do that much differently, but I might back off a little bit on my retinoid if I'm a bit more dry. Um, I keep it going, of course, because it's important for blemish management and for you know brightness and glow. And let's face it, whenever you're feeling a bit rubbish on the inside, you need that extra glow on the outside. It sort of, I don't know, it helps you kind of rally and be more resilient. Um, there's nothing worse than looking in the mirror and seeing how you feel reflected back in, 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 in the mirror. Um, but yeah, I might push moisturiser more, use a little bit less retinoid. I might apply it over the top of my moisturiser instead of applying it neat onto my skin. Um, and I'll certainly tend to remove any other extraneous actives that I don't think have as much importance. Um, and that's generally how I approach it and customise the use of my retinoids so that if I'm a little drier and more irritable that I don't have to abandon use completely. And then I guess the final thing is just, you know, to pamper yourself a little bit whenever you're feeling um, a bit low. So um, <laughs> I think having your hair done is a great morale booster. So I'm going to see the lovely Oscar Pera on Friday for a bit of a Zhuzh. Um, I've got some press um, work to do on Friday, so I thought I would combine those activities. Um, yeah, go and get a massage, do whatever it takes to make you feel good to get through a tough period. But yeah, keep your glow going on the outside. I think it helps us all manage when things are stressful on the inside. And then like me, look at your everyday, those little ways that maybe those small but significant changes can help you get more control um, of whatever it is you're going through. Sorry if that was a bit rambly, but hopefully um, real issues that some of you will relate to and I look forward to hearing more of your comments down below. Bye for now. <laughs>